I like this uh, this counting. It's like put you yeah. in pressure. <laughs> You're going live. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, give me one second, and I I do my uh, intro. Uh, what's your? It's Tiago, your name, and your uh, yeah, like your per first name. No. La uh, uh, surname. Last name. Last name. Yeah, surname. What is your surname? Uh, <laughs> Do you, maybe go only for Tiago. My last name is Ferreira. It's quite hard. Ferreira. <laughs> quite hard. It's quite hard. Yeah. I think it's one of the hardest names to to in say. Portuguese, really, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah least, I mean, at least I have been in your country for a long time, so I know. Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, common. it's common, but everyone I meet outside of Portugal, like no one can say Ferreira. It's such a. I didn't know, but it's such a complex name because of the R's. Like you have R and yeah. R. In the same it's, in the same word, like it freaks out most people. They're like, "What Ferreira? Ferreira? Like they don't, they cannot say it." Ferreira, Ferreira, Ferreira. It's okay. I Ferreira. mean, you can try. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's ah, okay. good. It's good. <laughs> okay, it was good. We can make a joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so let's go. Today, I welcome Thiago Ferreira uh, on the show. So thanks to have accept my invitation. Sorry, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Was uh, the right time to to have a sip of coffee. I agree. <laughs> I love how so, you you said my last name and and laugh. You're like Ferreira. You know, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Oh, I was not bad. Okay, great, great. So. Usually, oh, I start my show, I was doing in French, and I will do the same in English. It's like, Thiago, if you, sh if you should resume your path in three minutes somehow, how you will do that? Like, to show a bit to your listener who you are. Yes, so, thank you again for having me here. How to summarize my past in three minutes? I mean, three minutes is a lot. I can just blabber about anything and then take the last one minute. Because yeah, I will wrote I am, a few things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take notes. I am uh I always been an entrepreneur in my mind, even though I didn't know it, I believe. And um I worked as a software developer for uh, for a company a kind of big company. It's called Trivago. It's a hotel search company. Then I worked in a startup, but I always had this little scratch or itch in the back of my head where I always wanted to do something my own. And in all these companies, I tried to, at some point, I'll be like, okay, let me try to do something. And I tried to implement my own projects. And it was always very frustrating because it turns out companies don't want you to just be in entrepreneurial and uh, to explore your entrepreneurial spirit. They just want you to do what you're told. Yeah. So after around five years, or six years of doing that, I decided to take the leap of focusing only on, on my own projects. Uh, my partner and I were living in uh, Germany when I first started, but then we moved back to Portugal, uh, where I'm originally from. And yeah, for more than a year now, well, it, I always say more than a year, but it's almost, it's not two years, but it's one year and a half. I've been uh, building my own projects and trying to come up with a proper revenue. I've been sharing that journey in my own podcast as well, The Wanna Be Entrepreneur. I started a community with other uh, starting indie makers. It's a Slack-based community. It's it's one of my main businesses at the moment, and I've been trying out multiple things. And I've been exploring more about this indie hacking scene that we all love. It's something that I didn't know yeah. about when I first started. But then I found out on Twitter, and I found out there's so many cool people doing this, and this is actually a possibility. You can become an entrepreneur without basically raising money. And that's something that I always wanted. Uh, even though I didn't know it. So, yes, for the past one year and a half, I've been kind of exploring my inner indie hacker, meeting a lot of other makers, learning from them, and trying to come up with a salary that is able to pay the bills. I'm still yeah. not there, unfortunately. I'm around 500, 600 MRR, which kind of barely pays rent here in Portugal at the moment. So not, I recently also profitable still. No, no, far from it. It's especially with, with these days, ramen profitability, it's so high. 
that I mean, in in the plus side, I, I started to appreciate more money, <laughs> and <laughs> every time I, it's okay. crazy. Every time I go, and especially the restaurants, restaurants are so expensive nowadays. When I go and have a meal, and I think, oh my god, these are three clients. Like it takes me three <laughs> clients to pay this meal. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't understand. And then I don't understand how like Google and these big tech companies can pay, you know, five hundred k or or like 200k to people like I don't understand it's so much money so yeah that, that's that's basically me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that makes a lot of sense um let me take a last note on on my thing so you 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 take some subject i i really want to 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 know a bit more like you say something which is interesting you say you you didn't knew but you always been an entrepreneur what does it mean for you it it means that when growing up there's people that already know what they want to do right people that want to be doctors people that want to be um, football players or a chef i don't know i always envied people that kind of had everything figured out when growing up and i always felt like yeah but i don't know what i want to do i end up becoming an engineer and and learning how to code and coding was something that I really loved because it allowed me to create something. I was like, wow, I just need my laptop yeah. and then I can create whatever's in my mind. And then only when I when I went full time indie making and and entrepreneur and followed my entrepreneurial spirit, then I realized, wait, no, this is what I'm made for. This is what I what I really feel confident doing. I've never feel felt so fulfilled in any job so you you know the feeling of really finding your aspiration and really finding your passion that's yeah, your how purpose, i that's yeah. how i felt yeah my purpose for sure for sure okay makes sense and so when you were younger you didn't think like uh, you didn't have a dream job i mean no no i had i had many child child jo childish dream jobs you know like soccer player or I've never, I was yeah. never good enough, but you know, these kind of things. But, um, in the end I, I realized I didn't, yeah, I didn't have any, any dream job. Uh, funny enough, I, I, I told this story already, but I, when I think back to in my memory, me memories and I go back and I think, okay, what were the things I used to do back then? There was one, there's one memory that stands out, which was, I was still like maybe, third grade or fourth grade, I don't, I don't recall. And my friends and I, we decided to do our first entrepreneurial project. So we were actually making bookmarks uh, out of paper. We're like drawing and everything. And then we were selling it to our, to our friends uh, for like 50, 50 cents or so until the teachers were like, Hey, you cannot make money. I mean, <laughs> you're in the third grade. You cannot do this. And then we're like, ah, okay, then we'll do it for free. We don't care. And I, I really remember, I don't have that many like early on memories, but I really m remember being happy doing this. You know, the whole production and then some of us would do the markers, some of us would sell it, some of us would like write the orders. I remember like yeah. being something that I was really uh, happy on doing. So yeah, it turns out that I, I kind of knew what I want to be, but uh, I, I didn't realize. You didn't knew it was a job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know it was a job, true, yeah. What? VIP is a job. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I can sell bookmarks. Okay. Yeah. But that, that makes sense in a way. Like I think in, in the 100 person I have been interviewed in the other podcasts, uh, definitely this is a common pattern of uh, young people doing like kind of entrepreneurship project. And, and sometimes it's even very like... Uh, stupid things are illegal like for me mine was the first one was selling uh mp3 uh, uh key you know when uh, we were right. young like uh, <laughs> we we got the access to mp3 so i yeah. was able to f I, I, I was knowing how to download illegal music so i was getting to my friend and say what music do you want i made you an mp3 with all the music you like for 20 bucks uh, so I, and uh, the MP3 was 10 euros or something, so I was doubling the money with illegal music in it. <laughs> smart. That's uh, really smart. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> until, until someone told me this is illegal, what you're doing, in plus of uh, you don't have a company. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but we all have that. Like at one point, you got the experience of this entrepreneurship. There are also a very good common pattern. It's like um, it's people true. getting in high school, uh, going to um, uh, school uh, association. You know, like uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in French. So many, yeah, yeah. many entrepreneurs have like uh, uh, the pattern of being there because you have kind of an entre- uh, uh, a company. True, it's true. It's a non-profit, but it's a company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a friend that he, I think he did something with porn. He was like <laughs> an entrepreneur. It was like when he was 16 or something, he was doing something with porn. He made, he made t- tons of money, actually. Um, yeah. I don't remember now what, but like, yeah, for sure, this kind of projects work. I, I, <laughs> when he I told met, me, it's like, I, wow. That's so... <laughs> I met a guy in uh, Madeira, in uh, Portuguese island, uh, which is uh, a big famous entrepreneur of Madeira. And uh, I was talking with him, and he, he has the biggest porn web, French porn website, and the name is Tukif for the people who, for the people who know maybe, and um, and he started. And you only know because someone told you told you about it, right? Like you didn't know, and it didn't yeah, like, yeah, I never. Was. This idea, oh, okay. I'm pure uh, porn. <laughs> I'm pure. What's porn? What? <laughs> what wow, is this porn weird. thing? Okay. Oh, but, oh, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but the story is is like that. He started the business uh, by uh, sharing a, a naked picture for his friend, and then he discovered it was something he asked. So he, he, he built a server at the time where no one was building a server to share the image, and then he discovered he can make people pay for that. So he yeah. did, and up until uh, he has the biggest porn website, <laughs> which is very wow. fun. I mean, yeah, yeah, in high school, it's probably the... the biggest currency like this probably a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. wanting that <laughs> and now, yeah. now he has he has 80 employees something in madeira very big company 80 what sorry 80 employees ah, it's a, ah 80 employee only around porn no after he discovered like uh, if you are a porn company it's difficult for you to have a credit card payment because every bank are refusing you every platform refusing huh. you like in stripe you cannot do porn <laughs> Uh, Everyone so is so he, hypocrite. I love it. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, everyone Aaron watches Paul it, but crazy. I'm like, no, 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 you cannot use no. it. No, that's bad. That's no, bad. bad. <laughs> but if you can give so, me free credits, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yes, definitely. So because of that, he built his own uh, payment platform for porn uh, kind of website. So now this is his main activity. Okay, he's a, the biggest payment getaway <laughs> for porn website. Ah. Really? Wow, yeah. that's super smart. That's yeah, a very yeah. interesting story. I, I was very impressed. Uh, yeah. But he's definitely not an indie maker anymore, so I will not have it in the podcast. Maybe in the French mm-hmm. one, I could do that. Because it's a very fun story. Yeah, the guy is very I, would, I would listen to that story. Well, not in French. I don't. But I can my put French it on YouTube enough, with but... subtitles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be good. That would be good. <laughs> I think I think he speaks English. Yeah, maybe Portuguese even because he lived in Portugal since ten years. So I I think he should at least a podcast of indie hackers in Portugal. That would be interesting. I don't think people here and know what an indie hacker is that much. So it would be really cool uh, yeah. to do it. In. People are like what is this indie hacking? I actually recently did a, a talk here in Portugal in the conference. And yeah. I was exactly introducing the concept of indie hacking. And it was funny because some of the feedback of the people that were listening, they uh, came to me after afterwards and they said, like, I am an indie hacker. I didn't know it, Tiago. Thank you so much for telling me. <laughs> so yes. that, that was really cool. I, I explained, I think, the concept of bootstrapping to my girlfriend not so long ago, two days ago. And she was like, so being just a normal entrepreneur is a thing now? <laughs> I was like, yeah. yes. Yes, because uh, raising money was too much a thing. So we we take back or uh, make a normal way to be trendy. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. for sure. <laughs> was was very fun. Uh, but by the way, you were saying in Portugal uh, this is not well known, and I agree. I have organized in Madeira hackathon about doing indie mm. making project in Madeira, and uh, non Portuguese came. I think one. Because he was a friend of the or another organizer, but most of people were nomads, not yeah. Portuguese people. It's but. somehow very connected, being a digital nomad and the indie hacker. It's yeah. very connected. I don't know why. 
well, I guess it it goes hand in hand, hand in hand, in hand these kind of lifestyles. But uh, yeah, a lot of the people here that live in Portugal that I know that are indie hackers are also not Portuguese. That's lead me to a good question. Why are you indie hacker? Why are you you are not raising money? Why are you are not uh, you know trying to have uh, an associate? So, for me, there's two main reasons I would say. The first reason is is it's a different kind of set skill, like a different kind of skills. I feel that when you're raising money, you you need to be more. Your focus maybe is not that much the product and more the story you are selling. So you need to think yeah. in this grandiose story and, and go and pitch to people. And um, in the end, I always kind of felt that people that were doing this, they didn't really understand how to build the product. Some of them did, but a lot of them, they were like, no, we just need tons of money and then money will somehow save us. Money was, will help us with marketing. Money will help us with hiring. But for me, there's nothing more pure than uh, starting from zero, understanding everything you need to do in your business and, and really growing it. You really understand your users, you understand your technology, how to make money. So for me, and I'm biased, of course, but I think that there's no better way to be an entrepreneur than being a bootstrapper. So that oh, that's yeah. kind of the, the reason why I wanted that. I wanted to focus on actually building, understanding the process behind it. And not so much, and not so much going and just raise money and try to convince people of something that I don't even really fully understand. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, sometimes I was saying like uh, raising money for me now because I did this uh, that I have built company uh, even in the target of raising money, and I feel this is mm -hmm. like uh, you are playing the video game with the cheat code, and you are learning nothing. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like GTA I mean, 5 I, and maybe, I think, and then you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, and then of course, you have other stress, right? Like, I mean, you need a, then you have, you have to share a part of your company. You're not totally free. And um, I don't know if you did that, maybe you can tell that better. I've never done that, but I feel that is a lot of stress and I just prefer it being a bootstrapper. There's other kinds of stress. Don't get me wrong, but. I guess I prefer this other other kind of stress. In the end, we all want, we all need the money, right? So as a bootstrapper, you try to build a business as fast as possible so that you can make some money, so that then you can live and build up on your business. And as a as a startup entrepreneur, or a VC entrepreneur kind of thing, you you go directly to the money and then you build a project. So this gives you more time. And I believe there are certain projects, certain products that you can only do by raising money because you need a big team and I don't know, like SpaceX. It's impossible to bootstrap SpaceX, right? I mean, you, you can't, without any money, you can, yeah, just building a rocket and uh, it's impossible. Yeah, of course. Um, well, nothing is impossible. You can mostly. do a rocket in your garden, maybe. <laughs> a tiny one. You can do a rocket in your garden, but... I mean, yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Maybe if a it's possible, for mouse. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> and you start from there. Then you start selling for my, yeah. mice, and then you go up. It's really hard. Yeah. But there are certain things, a lot of projects that you don't really need one, two, three million. You can just you know build it and and let it grow, and it's more sustainable. And uh, yeah, I just prefer that that way. Yeah, that's what I say usually. I think like 99% 90, of startups doesn't need money. The only one who need money, it's the one who need R&D. Like if you have something right. you want to achieve so far and it's not doable right now, then raising money makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because the money buy you time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you are not a technical founder, so if you cannot build a website... Now things are changing because now you have no code and now it's much, yeah. much easier for you to build your tool. So it's getting more achievable for everyone. But I understand that if you cannot build a product, you necessarily need at least to hire someone to do it for you, which you don't necessarily need to raise money for that, but you need to have some money to spend. So or, I understand that famous, some, it's uh, easier for some I, I have an ID. Uh, I need a co-founder technical. <laughs> You're going to have 20% yeah, yeah. of nothing to help me build my vision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's, uh, you always depend on someone. 
either with money or or someone to build the product for you. So that's why also no code is it's amazing for a lot of non technical founders because now they can just build and and now as well with Chat GPT and and with the autopilot. I don't know, man. Like I see things this year, especially with AI, that I've never thought they yeah. were possible. So maybe in the future you can just describe your app and then it will just like generate the Flutter code and and then or whatever like React Native and and you have the app and maybe I it's already possible. saw that in in React. Uh... Like uh, um, a guy who was just writing what he wants, and the uh, IA generated the React, co- React code. It was a demo. It was not the real uh, um, yeah. application you can use, but the demo was working right. well already. Yeah, I mean, probably if we, we think predictable, this like file wind and things like that, I think it will happen. Yeah, soon. For sure, for sure. After 2022, after what I've seen with the advances in AI. I yeah. I believe in anything. I really After believe Peter that in the and, next and five any years. competition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for sure. Like for me, the Chat GPT made a huge difference. I was amazed with with the image generation, stable diffusion, and everything. I was like, wow, this is really really cool. But the Chat GPT, the fact that I can speak with it and, and like understands me, yeah. like you understand me, I was like, what is this? Like, is it even alive? I started really questioning myself because we go from Cortana and Google Home where you say like turn on the lights and they're like playing the Beatles. Like <laughs> I said turn on the light. And then you go from this to f- fucking right I don't know if I can curse by the way. <laughs> Sorry but Yeah, no uh, no no you can, right, you can. <laughs> Okay, so just write a story and then I don't know if you ever tried this but it's crazy. Like you ask it to write a I story it and it writes no, a story. No. And then you say, like, write the song, and it writes the song. It literally writes the song, everything rhyming, and I was like, yeah. oh, my God, this is unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. Today, today I use it for, uh, like, uh, I use it for more and more use case, but today was very fun. I got a question for a client, asked me, like, oh, do Capgo is working for Flutter app to do live updates? And I, right. and I say, no, because uh, Flutter is building native code, and it's not allowed by app stores. I put this. I took this sentence. I copy past yeah. to Chataya and say, "Do an art, a blog article about that." And he wrote me a blog article, and I release it like it's that. Crazy. It was perfect. Oh my god! Yeah. It's crazy. I'm doing like I'm answering uh, interviews. Like when you know when people ask, send you some questions, and you you it's like, "Oh, can you please answer?" No I'll post it. Yeah. I I at first I actually just like gave a few notes, and but now you can. Now that I think about it, the next th- thing I'll do is I probably I have some blog posts where I speak about myself. I'll put it there and then I'll put the question and say answer these questions. I, <laughs> why would I <laughs> do it myself? Yeah, yeah, makes sense. It's, it's very annoying the question you have to answer and they say minimum two hundred uh, character or something like two thousand characters. Yeah, yeah fuck. and you can just <laughs> say it. You can just say like do it in two hundred characters. Make tweets about myself. Make tweets about. About the blog post, you get a blog post. I make five tweets about it. Bam, done. Crazy, oh, crazy, crazy. I'm doing that tomorrow. <laughs> it's absurd, man. It's absurd. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I yeah. definitely love it. Did you saw what uh, Danny and uh, and Peter post today about the generative music? I've seen yes, um, but I didn't this fully one understand. Blow my it. mind. But they they. A guy, a very smart guy, he was like, how I can generate music with uh, uh, GPT-3, uh, no, not GPT-3, um, Stable, Stable Diffusion. diffusion. Mm-hmm. So he, he, he was like, yeah, music can be represented as image, like a spectrogram, uh, where like every line represents a, a frequency and more the oh. color is dark, more is high in frequency. Or right. it's... So right. he do a spectrogram of a lot of song. He feed that the machine, and then he say which style of the of music it is. And now you can just type anything linked to music, and it generate a music look like that. I wow. I, I typed uh, Eminem song uh, for Christmas, and it, I got something looking like Eminem for Christmas. I was like, what the fuck? What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's unreal, man. It it feels that. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they would come out and say, actually, we have a team of people that 
<laughs> but there, there was still no BS fest. But we have a team of people yeah. always ready to answer you because <laughs> it's so human-like <laughs> and so unbelievable that yeah. um, that I wouldn't be but, surprised. It's it's crazy. Yeah, there are still some glitch on details. You can see, like for the example, the I uh, struggle with the ants. Peter and uh, and yeah. Johnny share yeah, a bit yeah, yeah. about that and faces and as the, well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And for the um, facing, I was surprised because for a long time it was very not working. I've tried IR like eight months ago to yeah. generate image of face and it was like totally dead. And now it looks like it's so easy. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, they do it with faces probably. But I recently used some kind of open source tools or some websites to generate pictures. And yeah, the faces were just wrong. They didn't, they didn't work. Yeah. But, but I see them doing those pictures and they, they look perfect. So... Yeah. yeah, I think it's because they, they used the version 2 of Stable Diffusion. This is the most advanced one. And maybe ah, what you right. have used, it was the 1.5. Mm -hmm. The 2 was released yeah. around this summer. I think in August. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, I recently did a, a blog post. I So I, I asked, I kind of created a story with ChatGPT. I gave it some pointers and ChatGPT just created a full story. And then I said, like, make a, a movie script out of it. And it did. And then I illustrated this story using Stable Diffusion. And I shared it. I created a blog post about it. It got a lot of traction. A lot of people really liked it. And I, I was amazed with the fact that I could just create a story. And that it's not amazing, the story. Because I also made it rather rather fast. But, yeah. I mean, now, what is the future? Imagine that you're, you're watching Netflix. And then you just say, create another season of Friends. And then it just generates a season of Friends. Wow, it, yeah. uh, that's that's what I imagine the future being. Like you generate your own your own content. It's crazy. Yeah, get too excited. It makes with so this. much sense. <laughs> uh, I did I did chat GPT also for generated like uh, rephrasing my landing page uh, content. Like uh, make it more SEO friendly. Make it more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Works yeah. for a lot of things. It's crazy. Bro, I I just I just I copied the full page uh, the full text of my landing page. Everything, emails, dates, whatever. I paste it there and say, like, what is this? What is this page about? And it summarizes, and it's it's a great way for you to understand if you are actually transmitting the right message. Yeah, it, it really uh -huh. like right, and then you can ask questions, and like for instance, what is the price? And then ChatGPT will say, well, the price is not really specified, so I cannot guess. So you can really even understand what is understandable or not in your language. Oh, makes page. sense. Makes sense. Wow, there are so many use cases. It's crazy. More I yeah. see it, more it's like uh, it's coming. Uh, like lately, I, I I got very very good usage. I was stuck on SQL query because I'm very shit on SQL on SQL uh, yeah. query. Like I don't like doing that, and I was struggling for two hours. I put the whole stuff in the chat, and I say fix my code, and it did fix it in, in oh five minutes. God. With a few iteration, it, it find the problem. It told me like this is not working. This you can do that instead. No so way. Like, oh. Yeah, it's like it got better than me. I have ten years of experience. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah, crazy. and the code is in production right now. It's it's like uh, used in Capgo. <laughs> yeah, that's oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we we did a lot of uh, a lot of about the AI, but I would love to come back in something. Um, you talk about the link of indie preneurs uh, and uh, nomads, and I think there are a point interesting in that because, like, you don't feel like nomads are just people who want like maximum freedom, and indie are a bit the same. Like, be independent, it's being free. Mm -hmm. So I didn't understand the question. <laughs> the, the 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 question was like, this is maybe the link you were saying. Like I'm I'm not sure. Like what's the link? Do you think ah, that can be the link? Maybe. I think it's also a way of powering that lifestyle. As a digital nomad, you need to you need to always be making money, and it cannot be tied to one place. So one way to do that is to start your own projects. So there's a lot of freelancers. And yeah. then there's a lot of indie indie makers as well. I think it's that also makes sense. because of that. It, it's really it goes really well with that lifestyle. Whereas if you have a more, um, I don't want to say conservative lifestyle, but if you are stick to one place, you normally have more. You know, maybe you have a family. Most maybe, things, yeah. 
yeah, you are also not as flexible, right? So you have a mortgage, you have a car, a lot of things that don't go really well with instability and the fact that tomorrow you might not have a client or tomorrow you might not have money. So I think it's also, it's very well connected. Being digital nomad and an indie hacker, I think it's it's a perfect match. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I become in the also for the tourism because I wanted to be nomads and it was like a perfect match. Right. It do yeah. make sense. It do make sense. Um, I, I just remembered like uh, something we said earlier, earlier than that, uh, talking about raising money, the difference of uh, entrepreneurship. And that's something we really like, uh, for me, that's a thing that annoys me. It's when you have a company raising money, you use the tool. For example, uh, um, the last uh, bad experience I had, it was uh, N26, the bank. Um, it was a nice mm -hmm. app. And then they raise so much money. And then they start to do things for the people who pay, which is the investor and not the client anymore. So then it becomes very right. shitty for the client. Like the, the super was yeah, not yeah. there anymore. You got my million of client, new client, because the investor mm -hmm. asked that. But they were not uh, they were not ready for that. So they were doing shit. And I was like, mm. like my money was blocked for two or three weeks. And I was like, and at the end, really? I just say, oh, yeah, just do that. And it's, it works. And I was like, thank you. Two weeks. Huh. <laughs> I'm also a big N26 user, actually, but I've never... Uh, I, 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 at least I didn't notice that, that my money was blocked. That would, that would made me really, really upset. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah I for think sure. it was I mean, just at the peak of, uh, just after the raise money and they invest in a lot in ads. Mm. And now right, they right, probably yeah. have the right number of people in support. But you clearly see they don't do things for the right person. Like, because the right, I mean, they do it for the right person because they do it for the per people who put the money the most, which is not the client. And I think it's yeah. turned you to build a business which is not providing value to the people you wanted at the beginning. And that's true. Sad. You can be a little bit more flexible, for sure, when you're an indie hacker. But in the end, we all need money. So there's also a lot of indie hackers, yeah, doing that. I don't know. It's... Um, I. You mean raising? Not Not raising, but... So, for instance, I, I always said in my podcast that I didn't want to do sponsorships. I, I, I wanted to just be free, have yeah. my podcast, speak about whatever I want, interview whomever I want. I don't want them, I ads. I don't want to take the people's time with that. And I've, I've done, I've done so for, for more than 250 episodes or so, but I've never made money. I, I, I asked people a lot of times, Hey, uh, you can sponsor me. That's, that's the way I, I want to go. You can sponsor me and you can become a member. And some did, but it's, I mean, it's nothing. And then I recently, after a long time, I decided, okay, I want to, I want to do it my way. I want to do this kind of sponsorship, but I'm opening my podcast for sponsorships. And then suddenly people are like, okay, here's like 300 euros. I was like, what? That easy? Yeah. 300 euros. I mean, that's absurd, you know? And, and suddenly I am doing ads, <laughs> you know? And, uh, I try, of course, not to adjust too much. And even though, so now I have the B2C to B kind of business model, right? Like my clients, my listeners are the ones that somehow I create the, the product for them, but they are not the ones paying. So, right. So, so how do I manage this? How do I make sure that both parties are happy? It's not, it's not often easy, right? Yeah. You have the same problem as, uh, you, you people on YouTube, for example, YouTube creators. But yeah, I believe like the problem will be if you had a unique sponsor for a year, then you will become a bit less able to take your own decision because you have a contract, long term contract. If it's like one time or two times things like you will less feel like you own, they own you, you see, so you will yeah. take your own decision. So I think that's the problem with raising a lot. Like, for example, in, in US now, they do something which is very smart. It's, it's named uh, rolling through fundraising. Uh, it's like mm. every month you receive a certain amount of money will help you continue the next month and continue your grow. But it's not like a bunch, a lot of money. And you can stop when you want, if you want. Or you can continue and any party can stop. So it makes sense. Like you align interests better mm. than just raising like 10 million and then... Uh, 
then the people is like, yeah, now you are all, <laughs> all bitch. So, so, so every month you, but it's, you get money from the same investor or different investors? Um, it depends. Um, there are some platform where you're like, put your own project and uh, every month uh, you have a, a bucket to fill and uh, any investor want, can participate and other right. fund it's assign uh, partners because it's easier but it's very mm. interesting concept i think it's it's and you can ask way less also imagine like to survive your project you only need uh, 2k but you can put that and people are going to have a very, very tiny amount of your company, but it's fine. They yeah, will still yeah, have yeah, yeah. money back. Yeah, there's a company doing that. It's called Cedars, where you could uh, raise money from like normal people. It doesn't need to be investors necessarily. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, you would raise a, a little bit from a lot of people. It's kind of kickstarting, but you will actually give them equity. And uh, I always found that an interesting concept as well. Because, yeah um a little bit a little bit connected with with uh, what you also wanted to speak about regarding um somehow yeah. well-being and mental Sorry. health yeah money is probably the source of my the biggest source of my anxiety in 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 this indie yeah. journey like not having money is crazy and if i thought i don't know and sometimes i wonder wow if i had like 2 million if I would raise money, okay, maybe I would give 10% or, well, I don't know, 40% of my company, but 1 million that I could just spend and have a paycheck and that would, that would be so nice for, for my well being. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Clearly. It's, it's, I, it's I, tough. I mean, it's I mean, tough if, not if having you, money. If, if, if you win it at the lottery, maybe, but if you have it from investor, there are a big downside and I have felt this downside right. and, it's not really like you still have. You also feel even... anxious, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the the people are like um, they like usual investor. They want to make five times or ten times the money they have put on you. So then, for them, if you're not, if you look, you don't know what you do. They are very like pushing you on like uh, to understand what you're doing, and you don't have like time or. It's like your time is not your time anymore because they want that right. in five years and they want quick result to show you are going uh, to do, you know, like uh, an explosion in your business. So if you right. don't look like uh, an explosion, they are like pressuring you. What, what does it mean to pressure you? Like, do they call you often? Do they, what, what is the pressure looks like? Uh, you have to do report with your investors. Like uh, they, they say every quarter right. or every month. And at this report, they ask you why this is not uh, going well, uh, what you can do better. And they say, okay, so you think by doing that, it will be better. Okay, so you saying that next month, we're going to ask you if you did. And then you have this, you yeah. know, it's like uh, they give you, you have duty. <laughs> and you cannot just quit. That's also something that somehow stressed me when I think about raising money. As an indie hacker, you're building a project and you're a solopreneur. And after a while, yeah. like, I don't like this project anymore. Fuck it. Like, I'm not doing it anymore. anymore. Stop it. It's running in the background. Whereas, yeah. as when you raise money, even if, and that must be really stressful, doing something you, you're not passionate about anymore, you don't want to do it, but you're just doing because you owe someone money. Ooh, that's, that's not good. That's not and, good. And at all. even, even, even like, uh, if you want to take a big decision of your company, like uh, you understood like uh, what you are doing, the product is not the good one. You want to switch to different, something different. This decision, your board has to approve it. So your investors mm. have to say yes or no. And for example, right. I got a call yesterday with my um, ex co-founder and um, mm -hmm. he tell me after I left, I left because they were needing to raise money. So I have left because of, of that. And they, they raise money. And now they are in the position where you, the product is fantastic. It's like very going good, but still not having a lot of money. And they have an opportunity to have a big investor in US. And this opportunity is linked to transfer the company in US. But the okay. current investor in France doesn't want that. He say, if you go to wow. US, I want more uh, percent of the company. But it's like you're not putting more money. No. So 
doesn't make sense. And then they are blocked because of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I remember when I was working for a startup, it was the same, managing yeah. founders and new, uh, not founders, uh, investors and new investors. Again, it's a it's a different skill set. It's something yeah, I just yeah. don't wanna, I don't want to spend my my time doing that. But yeah, it's... yeah, I guess there will be different different anxieties for sure. Definitely. So let me introduce the real question and we, we go for that because it's already a bunch of time we have talked together and I really enjoy that, but uh, let's go to the question. Um, so you share not so long ago, I think two, two or three days ago, like you were struggling a bit to have time for yourself and have time for your project, finding the right balance. So the right. question is like, how you do that? Like, how you find the right balance or how you try to find it because it's still uh, a learning, I believe, for you and for me. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, it's a question that I, I don't have an answer myself. I, it goes in waves for me. There's times where I'm more relaxed and I'm able to take some time off and, and times where, where I am not. Um, so let, let me lay out the problem, right? So... At least in my mind. Yeah. Again, it goes back to money. So I don't have money. I, I don't have enough money to reach the end of the month with more money in my bank account than when I started. Right. So I'm still somehow burning my savings or at least, well, yeah, mostly burning my savings. Yeah. So I always have this feeling that until I have that problem fixed, I cannot stop working. Because that becomes the number one priority in my life, right? So yeah, how can I work? Usually, you burn the money <laughs> more. Exactly. Like, let's yeah. Go to exactly. Restaurant. Exactly. So how can I go to a restaurant or go travel or do whatever outside without being making money? So that's definitely the biggest anxiety. Something that um, forces me somehow to work, and at the same time, I like working, which is yeah. also somehow a problem, right? So I. I love doing this. I love coming up with new features and and try to come up with new projects. It's something that I'm really, really passionate about. So this is the perfect combination for disaster. It's the perfect combination because you feel that you need to do it and you love to do it. So, yes, spending hours, spending weekends, spending all the time, even when you are not at your keyboard, you're thinking about it, right? So that's the biggest problem. And now what are the possible solutions? For me... There's, I guess, I'm not saying that I'm great at them, but there's a couple of solutions, right? So first of all, if you are quitting your job and you're for focusing 100% in indie making, have savings. I cannot yeah. stress this enough. You need to have savings. You need to have a runway of, let's say, at least six months, at least six months, where you can wow. safely work on your projects and not and not think about anything. You can say, okay, this money, I will spend it, no problem. So that's that's something really, really crucial. And and then you need to realize that your resting time, the time that you spend resting is also time, it's really important for your own business because yeah. you get to take a different perspective, you take a step back, you feel happy. And if you are not happy, if you are unhealthy, if you get some um, depression or something, you will not be able to make your business as well, right? So it's like eat, eating properly for for a, um, a sport, like a football player or something. You you need to eat properly, you need to exercise, you need to do all of this so that you can perform at the highest level. So you need to kind of yeah. interiorize all of these things and then at some point just force yourself. Like, okay, it's weekend. On Saturday, I'm not working. Doesn't matter. I have tons of things to do, but I'm not working. I'm either going with my friends, I'm putting some time aside, but I'm not working. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's kind of my solution. Doesn't mean I'm really good at it, but yeah. Yeah, it do make sense. I have the same stress as you, uh, to be uh, full transparent. Um, you have seen I have a bit of uh, more MRR than you, but I was having the habit of having a lot. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I still feel I don't have enough. Uh, currently I have yeah, yeah, yeah. around 2,000, uh, 1,800 something. Currently, at most mm -hmm. time, and I still burning more cash than I, I earn, and that's very complex, uh, especially when um, for me I am close to not having saving anymore, 
and and yeah. plus I am not in my own country, so it means I need a flight back. You know, I am in Bali right, right. now. So if I burn too much saving, then I am homeless in Bali. <laughs> yeah. So are you are you yeah. able to? But you can you cut down those expenses so that you? Yeah, yeah, I could live for less. Like and currently, I am living in a very big house because I I I become a bit like uh, you know having the habit of a nice house, nice looking, nice food. Uh, not cooking, uh, you know. So then I could I could reduce my my expense. But one thing I don't want to do a bit is that because I believe when you start to reduce your reduce your what you spend, you also reduce your ambition, you know, because you don't need that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so I put myself a bit in the stress on purpose. To, to do mm -hmm. better action, because when you are in this mindset of like you need to find solution, then you find them. If you don't need it, it's more like uh, you have to find motivation. You see? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I understand that. It's uh, a bit extreme uh, and a bit complex, especially uh, for me. I don't know. Like you're still with the same partner when you left Germany? Yeah. Yeah. So you have long-term relationship because for me it's a new yeah. relationship. In same right. time, I'm building business. So this is like, uh, I'm like, so how I take time on my relationship, or I take time on my yeah. business, or I take time uh, for myself also. <laughs> so I'm like, what I'm doing? Yeah, and... that that yeah, that's for sure. I mean, how how does your partner understand that? Does she understand that? She's like, okay, I I don't have time for it, or she she totally understand more than I even expect, which is very surprising uh, for me, and I really love her for that. But I still feel like guilty, you know, like uh, if I feel working when she wants to spend time with me, and I'm like, uh, so what I'm yeah. doing, like spending time with her, and I thinking to work, or I go to work and I will think to her, she's thinking to me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure, for sure. I, I totally get that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really not an easy. What question. is the solution? I, yeah, I, I mean, for me, there are not real solution. Like, I, I mean, one basic solution, and it's the solution of many, many problems in our life. It's having good communication, like uh, with yourself and with others. That's something I have learned this year, which was very important. As a learning, um, I'm very like liking uh, the in the self development branch. I like the um, non violent communication because I was very bad communicant when I was younger. I was saying you do shit mm. instead of oh that's con that's can be done better, which right. is a way different message. And um, <laughs> and I got problem with uh, people I was working for because of that. Exactly this sentence. Mm. So I have learned a bit uh, <laughs> in this field, um, understanding like how you share your feelings without hurting others. It's basically what is uh, non-violent communication. Okay. It's like it can be received without violence. And I was like uh, knowing a bunch of things about that, but then I, in the beginning of the year, I broke up. And I felt like one of the cause of that was like, I don't know how to communicate good enough. So I've, I've done a bit of research on this topic. And then I found a guy who was talking a lot about nonviolent communication. I feel like good feeling for him. So I bought his uh, online mm -hmm. uh, videos. And the f like the first two hours of video were about how you communicate with your shell, with yourself. Like, did you ask yourself this morning how you feel? And I was like, oh. Wow, shit. <laughs> what, you know, what, I, is, what does that mean? I, I don't even understand it. Like asking yourself. So it's like reflecting. Yeah. Like how often do you do this? Like can you give some tips on that? I don't, so I'm doing that not really. Uh, I, I Like I try to improve that because I, I felt still I look stupid doing that. But I have seen the effect. It's, like it's like just go on your mirror on your... On your bathroom and just look at yourself and ask you how you feel today or even at the end of the day 
or you or you want to. And then you, you so you do this exercise by actually speaking, or just think about it. Do or do you like really speak and you have like the best, a, a the best conversation with the mirror. Definitely. And uh, I did this exercise also in uh, something else in Bali here, where we were like uh, there ask us to put ourselves in two different roles, like uh, masculine energy and feminine energy, and say to speak to each other yourself. It was okay. So you can do something like that. You you can like talk to yourself, and that's very interesting because you will see like you are avoiding a lot of internal feelings because you're not one to see like the stress you're feeling and everything. You're like having it in background but didn't give it a voice and sometimes by just giving giving it a voice it's kind of vanish the stress because you are doing it consciously and you can have a talk like i understand you are stressed but we're gonna find a way you know you, you can do that to yourself and that's very like as you do with a friend you can do it with yourself and that's magical mm -hmm. yeah i kind that's of realized that uh, what i why I like doing the podcast so much when yeah. I, when I'm just speaking, you know, when I'm, I speak with myself, basically, I don't have any thing planned. I'm just talking and sharing my feelings and it's very therapeutical. So it ends up being something similar to what you just mentioned. I'm speaking yeah. with the audience though, like, but they don't answer back. Right. So I'm just like speaking <laughs> to myself, but, um, but do, do you allow yourself yeah. to be really personal on the podcasts? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I most, yeah, I'm quite open about a lot of things, but not 100%. Yeah, of course, not of 100%. Course. You, so you, you want a bit of privacy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that is a great idea. That's a great idea just to check in with yourself and, and think about what you want in life, what you want in the next year or two and, and think, okay, can, is this path going to take me there? Um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's definitely a great great tip. Yeah. One thing currently I do with my girlfriend, which is very cool, uh, and I never done that before. Meeting her, we do every full moon and new moon, like uh, putting our intention. We write our intention for the next period, mm. and that's very cool. That's I, I make me realize, like because I've put the intention of that, that's happening faster. Because it's it's also conscious. But in what, in what want, kind of intention? So, from your relationship or from your personal life, like uh, uh, what kind of both. intentions? We do both. I can I can share it. Uh, one. Let me obsidian. Let me open obsidian, and I I tell you one uh, from the last one. You will have a good okay. example. That's interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. It's very. It is she like a project manager? I imagine that. No, she, she, she's like a, a coach. She's a coach. So it ah, makes sense. okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah, um, I was imagining that for a very much a project manager kind of thing. Yeah, she she was before also. Mm, okay. <laughs> so I I found it, um, and uh, so the how we wrote it, it's in the way like it's feel it's already happening. So you wrote it wrote it as a present form, and um. So I've wrote, uh, my freedom allow me to spend time outside and dance uh, the life. Uh, so it's really like enjoying the life. I enjoy making a living off my business. It's not like a stressful. Um, <laughs> I learn from others by doing a podcast in English. I have wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That checks out. <laughs> I can yeah, So you that. see it working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So every full moon, what is it like once a month? Uh, we do full moon and, and new moon, uh, not exactly. So same, it's twice like a month. It's, yeah, uh, new moon we more uh, do things about gratitude. Why why we like our life, you know? Because that's yeah, that's something you forgot a bit. Like uh, sometimes you feel like your life is shit, but in fact you have so much nice things. Like right. for me right now, I'm in amazing amazing house in Bali with an amazing person in my life. I mean, yeah. family, friends, and, and I'm like, oh, my business is not working as I want. It's like, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. calm down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the other things working well. Yeah, good point. Great point. Great, great, uh, great ideas there for sure. Yeah, she has uh, she has very good tools like uh, mm -hmm. uh, for for this. But this is our 
this is our um, how to say that our like uh, our competencies her competencies she's helping people find finding her a day day path in life you know right. when they want to quit job and and do something mm -hmm. else she helped them doing it's a very noble noble mission yeah, do you think people cool. that do not have they are not dating a coach <laughs> do you think they should get a coach do you think this is an important thing to do Mm, to be to be honest, uh, I got in my previous podcast a guy was uh, doing coaching, and um, we were talking a lot about coaching businesses and stuff like that. And I told him like, I don't know, I feel like coaching is still like uh, not well seen for people. And he said, Yeah, yeah, that's a repetitive pattern. People think uh, they have a guru or something like that, and uh, they see that as a shitty things to do, like a psychologist. Also, right. people have a bad image. Yeah. And so I was with him, like, I was like, yeah, maybe it's because people don't understand what it is. It's a, yeah, because you yeah, understand only sure. when you're in it. So we decided to do the coaching together and publish everything on YouTube. So I did eight coaching with him, I think, um, all in public, like uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> coaching in public to share That's, about uh, that. So okay. It's, it, That's brave. It's in French. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy because like the first things is like sharing uh, things about your personal life, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go there. <laughs> Everyone know my my shitty uh, life when I was a child, um, right? But it did help me. Even okay. I didn't do that in the purpose of like getting help at the beginning. It did help me a lot to put a, a real objective, make me think about that. You know, that's when that's. The, the 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 clear moment where I decided to quit was into a, um, a coaching session uh, to quit my co-founders. Even I like them. It was like, yeah, but you are like a duality on two ideas. You like indie making, you have your podcast and you are a co-founder who is going to raise money. So that will not make you happy. And I was like, yeah, right. I didn't say it like that, but they make me understand it. Right, like coaching work, they don't give you the solution. Right. So, when yeah. I understood it, I was like, okay, I have to make a choice, it doesn't make sense otherwise. And then I made the choice yeah. of become indie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely, yeah, I help. mean, that makes so sense. Yeah. I remember, uh, you probably won't like what I will share now, but I remember when Portugal beat France in the Euro. <laughs> no, it's fine, uh, I don't care about football, <laughs> I didn't care so. Um, the the one the the player that scored so that that was unreal because um we were playing worse for sure it's one of those things about soccer but about football but the player that scored is actually not so good and he scored the goal and then his life changed he became a national hero and then he he thanked his coach uh it, like personal coach his life coach not yeah. the, the football coach so. And there was, I remember like a lot of people then speaking about coaching and, um, and how coaching, he really said like, if it wasn't for my coach, I wouldn't have scored. I, I, I wouldn't believe in myself to score. And I guess for a lot of, a lot of people mock that, but a lot of people as well kind of realize that this is something important for yeah. any profession, sports. Yeah. Indie hacking. Maybe if you work for for a company or for someone, it can be something. It's very close to therapy, I guess. I don't yeah. know. It, it is close, but which is fun is like in sport, people understand it more. more. Like uh, for a swimmer, everyone ask him who is his coach, like when he became famous. But like uh, if you are an entrepreneur, you have a coach. Mm, it seems less less something public, which he, but. In fact, most of good, good, famous entrepreneurs have a coach. Yeah. But they Top don't SEO, share about it. It's, it's a bit hidden. Yeah. So you think people should share more about that? Yeah. And also, I, yeah, sharing more will be something definitely helping about that. And, and also, I think people have to think like uh, thinking they don't need the help. It's also a limitative belief. Like it's like it doesn't make sense. Like uh, to decide to put yourself in just the hardest way possible. Like uh, you can learn without uh, putting you in shit. 
you can learn mm -hmm. in an easier way and 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 you will enjoy it more because like we always forgot the the point is not the the succeed the success in the end but it's the journey and the journey it's you have to enjoy it every step and most of the education we came from don't make us enjoy it every step like uh, yeah. the stress you get and the stress i get make us like uh, not enjoy it as we can like for example yeah. two two weeks ago i was supposed to go to a dance party with my girlfriend and I, I during the week i couldn't work properly for a good period of time because we had like meetings or we were searching a house a new house or things like that so when we arrive at the time like uh, we have wait for it the doing dance together which is something i really like to do with her i was like yeah i want to do but i feel in the same time like i should punish myself because like uh, i didn't work enough so i decided to don't go instead of just enjoying and having like okay it's fine this week it didn't work next week it will be better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no for sure i i totally get that punishing yourself thinking that uh you need to you need to work that I do that very often like a lot of a lot of things that I want to do then I will be like no but this was not a productive day so I don't get to do it you know yeah um yeah. which is a fallacy because you you cannot be productive every day it makes no sense like you would be superman or something so yeah, yeah. And, but, and we um, have been we have been too much um, into the culture of 9 to 5 than even we are not working for someone we do it again like my girlfriend told me um like uh, i am my old boss wanting me front of the computer now i feel like if i'm not front of the computer sometimes i do nothing and i was like fuck me too <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah Where it's you, true even, that's you could, very much true like you could you could have a work and think about your business and you will feel it's not very productive because you were not like coding, for example, for developers is the hardcore one. Like if I don't do code, if I do marketing, I feel like I don't, I wasn't productive today. But don't you think that once you're making money, enough money to to pay your expenses? So let's say you're making, I don't know, five k yeah. after after taxes, everything five k. Don't you think that life would be just much easier, much stress-free? Because I don't know, when I think about my own life, and and uh, my partner and I also discuss this quite often, she's like, I think you will always want more. I think you think about money and then, okay, you're making this, but then you reach 1K, you want 2K, you reach 2K, you want until whatever, 100K. And I don't know, yeah. maybe, I, I, but I think no. I think once I'm making... If I was making like 2k for instance of course I would I would maybe want to go let's say to 10k if you ask me to put a number 10k per month perfect I I feel that I would like reduce my my stress levels I would or even less even if I was making 5k for sure reduce my stress levels and would approach my business and my life in a completely different way I would think more about okay now we can have kids we can we can do other things because I feel I'm not a slave of my work. You know, I, I think the whole, the whole reason why I'm doing this is I, I don't want to be slave of work. I, that's why I don't want to work for others. I, I yeah. want to have that kind of control. Um, so I always feel that now it's okay. You know, keep pushing because once you re reach there, you can rest. But maybe that's not it. Yes and no. Like definitely having more money will, will help you to release the stress from not having enough money. But then you will have other stress coming because the money comes from someone, it's your client. And your client are, have needs, so you are kind of linked to them. So they, if they don't feel something good, or you will like uh, feel like, oh, I need to do something. And I have that a bit with Capgo. My clients are a bit around the world, and each mm -hmm. time they send me a support request, anytime it is in the night or day, I, I answer if I see it. So imagine I have 10 times more clients. I will be like not having life, not having time anymore. Yeah. So the only solution is like, okay, I will employ someone to do the support for me. So then you have less, right. less money <laughs> and you have someone to pay now. So you have the pressure of he has to have money. 
and you see it's like the stress is always like I think what we have to do it's practice like uh, I don't know meditation things that calm us and make make us uh, grounded because that's mm -hmm. the only way stress it will be always present in our life and we have to learn how to manage that in any time in mm -hmm. any situation yeah 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 I love that when you mentioned about we just leaving the nine to five still in our heads yeah. yeah one thing that i realized after like doing this for more than a year is that how we are so connected to this structure of how society lives it's so crazy but i guess we are creatures of habits but we think even like thinking okay i work on week weekends i rest and then monday i need to start working why like why yeah there's no real reason especially if you're working for yourself you can work on, okay, if you have others in your life, then it's harder, but you can just take Monday off. Why not? There's yeah. no one deciding uh, your life, no one deciding. That's kind of also the beauty of working for yourself, but at the same time, uh, you are the one making that decision and you tend to be stricter to yourself than others, right? So you'd be like, you cannot, you cannot go to the dance party. If you haven't worked, yeah. probably your boss, if you had a boss, the boss would be like, yeah, just exactly. go to this part. I don't care. Exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. You were talking about working like uh, during the weekday and uh, and taking time during the weekend. We realized that with uh, my girlfriend the, not so long ago because we were like, yeah, weekend is always busy when we do activities. And we were like, fuck, we don't need to work during week. We could change that and do like uh, exploration of valley during week and work yeah, weekend. yeah, yeah. And we're like, oh shit! <laughs> so yeah, we, yeah. we decided to do something. Uh, we created the concept "No More Monday," and to don't have to work Monday, to don't have like, oh, I have to work. You see, interesting. I, yeah. Was it weird at first? Uh, yeah, for her especially because she's like, she did quit um, the nine to five uh, mood uh, less far than me. I am a freelancer since long, so. Um, I, I got the habit a bit to don't have a very agenda on things, but still right. working mainly the week. So for me it was easier, but for her it was like, ah, oh, I feel like oh, awkward, like staying in bed uh, Monday at at ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's not working. Awkward, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're like, but it's free, yeah, but... and it's freeing at the same time. Yeah. Right? I think yeah, that's the, the it, beauty of it. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. After you get the habit, you buy, uh, you pass this uh, this mm. like the behavior was in you, but was not like uh, something very serving you. Then you feel like, oh, that's cool. Like mm. the the first time I had this, it was when when I was a freelancer. I realized like uh, I like to work during night. And I don't like to work during morning. I, I don't like early morning since I'm a child. I was always late in school, the morning. Yeah, and, I, and if I was yeah. in time, I was sleeping in the in the school the morning. Yeah, same, completely. Same. Yeah, and and for my beginning of work life, I was still working mon morning, and I was like doing shit, not performing, and I was like, I don't like my job or things like that. And at one point, I decided to switch and say, ah, oh, I don't work morning anymore. And then I was like, fuck, this is way different. <laughs> like, yeah. Totally, totally. Few totally, 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 adjustments yeah. like that are very, like, uh, game changer for your own, like, well-being. Yeah. And and also making your own money, uh, it's unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Right? It is, it's stressful, but at the same time, you feel like, yeah, this is earned by me. I I'm doing my impact in the world. I'm getting paid for that. So also it's like a, it's a mindset change because you are, we are used to, okay, we work for others. The others take care of the money. We just have to say whatever we are told. We have to perform and we are stressed if we don't perform because we won't get paid, but we, we don't have to be worried about if we perform, you get paid, right? And yeah. when you are working for yourself, you can do everything right, but you don't find clients, right? So you are really the the lord of your own money you need to be you yeah it, it's it's such a great feeling and then when you're spending that money right when you take that money and you like buying a, f a meal a trip a house i don't know like whatever it feels so much rewarding 
it's it's, oh, yeah. it's unbelievable feeling i agree you know you were talking about like uh, this having your own money and and the feeling and that make me uh, remember something like about well-being i i've discovered like this is kind of a coincidence but i really like this coincidence each time i take time for myself for me or my or me with my girlfriend my couple i go to do something and then i receive notification of stripe like oh you get a new client to 40 euro yeah. a, a, a day a month i was like fuck i got even like uh, i think pizza at like that uh, 500 euro client by month by that i was in the hike i was like oh, so cool yeah Yeah, I mean that's the dream, right? Like that's that's also kind of the reason why we do this to make money while we sleep. Like wake up to a few more clients, be on holiday, yeah. and get a few more clients. And uh, even though passive income is not true, it's it's not real a reality because, as you said, you can have a support ticket any time yeah. of the day, any period. They don't wait. Um, you can afford if you do things properly. You can afford to work less and to control your life. So yeah. somehow I that's that's the dream. That's what I want to achieve. We we should reshape the concept of passive income to async income. You know, like it's not synchronized to yeah. what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, great point. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, we'll so you can a work of, a lot um, to developers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, you can work a lot and uh and then you just collect the profits afterwards. You don't necessarily yeah. collect immediately, but then you can just chill and you can also have bursts of work and then and then relax for the for the rest of the time. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. That that's uh, clearly like uh, something I know will happen right now with Capgo. The last feature I did, it took me two or uh, two weeks something to do it. It was so complex, so hardcore, because I don't understand uh, anything about cryptography. So I had to learn a lot of bunch of, bunch of stuff for mm. that. And I finished it, and I was like happy. It's done. I published a blog article about that, and then the business didn't change. But I know in the future it will attract big clients. They will be like very needing that. But for now, yeah. I didn't see the impact. I was like. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Definitely. it's very, I think, uh, it's the good world. I'm really, nah, yeah. I, <laughs> I will tweet about that. <laughs> yeah. Ask G Shed GPT to, yeah. to tweet about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I will try that just after the call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's already one hour and 12, uh, 30 minutes. We talk. That's cool. Yeah, hopefully we won't bore people too much <laughs> if we oh, talk too no, much, but I, I think it's I, an interesting topic. Yeah, it is. It is. Definitely it is an, inf an interesting topic. And I think, like, uh, the, by experience, I did that with the um, other podcast. I went to maximum two hours and an half, and still people were listening. And it was yeah. the it was one of the most listened podcasts, the one, the very long one. Yeah, I, I realized at first when I was also starting my podcast, I was thinking, what is the f best time or uh, how, how long should my podcast be? And then I kind of realized that as long as the the good, how do I phrase this? Basically, you the need content, to make it yeah. good quality. Yeah, if it's good content, yeah. it can be as, as long as, as, uh, as you have good content. doesn't matter. Because people also don't listen to podcasts... Uh, at once right so i when i'm listening to interviews i listen to like maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes then i stop then i restart it whenever i have time so i don't necessarily need to listen everything at once uh, and for sure people don't don't really care too much if if it's uh 10 minutes longer or not so hopefully they, in, uh, they won't care here as well <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. in french i i got very great feedback was uh, very make me happy about that It's like people told me like, oh, the length of your podcast doing is like, uh, so I will I will do running until the podcast is finished. So they were like, uh, okay, today will <laughs> two be two hours hour running. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe how do for you... the two hours and half uh, they did a split, but uh, usually they yeah. people told me that. Is how what's your audience? How big is your audience in the podcast? In French, in the French podcast, yeah. 
Um, by episode, I, I have uh, between 700 and 1,500 listener. Wow, Depends. that's a lot. Yeah, that's I'm really a lot. lot. I'm like now will pass soon the uh, 100,000 listen of in total podcast. Do you do you get sponsorships? Um, oh yeah, that's something I wanted to share with you, and I forgot. Thanks for bringing it back. Um, no, I never did sponsorship. The only things I did was working well at the end, uh, because now I'm not doing much uh, episode in in French. I released a few two months ago, and nothing since. Um, so uh, what I was doing is uh, each time I do an episode like we do together since it's in your interest uh, to be in my podcast because I give you visibility, we split the cost of the episode. So I was saying one episode is uh, 240, as I told you, it, the cost it was costing me, the, the whole processing of the video and the audio. Right. And, uh, so they were paying half of it um, for be present in the podcast. And most of them were saying, yes, I did that on 30, I think 30 person and 28 say yes. Okay. But, you know, with that kind of audience, you could easily do sponsorships. Like, I mean, I have much less. I have around like 200 people listening. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. extremely Definitely. hard. So like the fact, the fact that you can grow to a thousand, that's really a lot. Like a thousand people listening to you every week or whenever you, you launch it. I mean, that's really, really amazing. So you could easily yeah. ask for, I don't know, like 500 per episode or something. Um, to... Yeah, I could I could have done that, but like uh, the only contact I got with sponsors, it was like people saying like, yeah, for one thousand listener, uh, twenty euro. I was like, I will not do ads of one minute and all for that price. Like I prefer to to throw it's this crazy. money away. Twenty yeah. euros, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the whole uh, industry of ads are crazy. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, because it was from partners. Um, uh, you know, by platforms and by platforms, they are like very into the mindset of YouTube uh, of yeah. things like you're going to do thousand, one hundred, like a thousand of thousand of listening, which is way different of a video of five minutes and a podcast of two hours. But uh, they were yeah. not understanding that. So I just gave up on sponsorship and I don't like ads much. So I was like, whatever. It was like, uh, I did that because it was good for me. I have learned so much with the podcast and the guests. Yeah, same. So yeah. that's why I've paid that because it probably cost me. So it's ninety-five episode to for uh, multiply by uh, two hundred forty. You can do the calculation. It's twenty-two uh, k. Yeah. Yeah. So the podcast it's crazy. cost me probably a bit less because at the beginning I was uh, having uh, less. Uh, I was not doing the video. So, but between 10 and 22K, probably. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was and, happy and people to do don't, that. People don't understand, but I think a podcast audience is completely different than YouTube or Twitter or any other audience because it's people that are listening to you every, for me at least, every week yeah. for 40 minutes, 50 minutes. I mean, how many people can you say in your life from your friends that listen to you that that long? Yeah, you every have a every week. Relationship with these people. Yeah. So whatever you say, they trust you, right? So whatever you say has a much bigger impact than an ad on Twitter. So maybe an ad on Twitter you pay for like fifty cents an impression. In this case, you cannot pay fifty cents. You need to pay like five euros in impressions because people are, are listening to you, and if. If they they will at least check it out, whatever you're saying, uh, as long as you share yeah. something that is interest in their interest as well, and it's not just some random like NordVPN shit, people will listen to it and they will be like, yeah, uh, let, let, let let me check it out. So I try to speak about indie products. I often share about like indie products that I believe that it's useful for them and they are also useful for me, and I share it with with them. So I tried to come up with an ad. That it's really personal and it's it's actually getting content and enriching the content of my episodes. And I am like always asking for feedback. It's like, is this good? Is it too boring? Is it too long? 
because I, I really I also don't like ads so I need, for it to be a good ad for me it doesn't need to look like an ad of course I say it's an ad so that I don't trick people but yeah. I I also want people to want to listen people to be excited for this part like yeah cool I will learn about the new indie product something that I can use I'll get a discount in the end amazing it's something that I look for and not just the same kind of ad always where people just don't care they skip because if they are skipping for me why why do I like no one is gaining from this interaction right so people are skipping because they don't like it I uh, the sponsor that don't get their product heard and in the end, I am not happy because no one is happy, right? So, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't make sense uh, that, that way. Uh, I agree with you. Like, uh, the only time I kind of agreed to do something was the with uh, a, a guy who was uh, providing money for um, from SaaS. Uh, he has a product, you know, like um, you, you share your, you connect to uh, your Stripe to his platform. And then he, he check your revenue. And you do a projection in one year. You say, okay, in one year you're gonna earn a, around that, so I can I can borrow you this amount for this uh, amount. So it was for ten percent something, but it's it's instant just with Stripe connection. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is amazing. Um, so I did a bit. Uh, uh, it was supposed to having a partnership, and uh, I was supposed to tell him each time I talk about him, he give he he take the the price of the episode, but. Uh, I talked a few times about him and never did the deal finally because I forgot. <laughs> but I could have, have a bit more money. Yeah, 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 with that audience for sure. I mean, for that with that audience, you could you could definitely increase your MRR quite yeah. a bit if you if you just maybe record two episodes per week or so per per month. Um, I don't know. At least from my experience, people are paying around. 60 yeah now i increase the prices a little bit but yeah 60 per episode for me with 200 people uh they pay so you have five times more so uh, one would only imagine that they could would pay like at least five times more as well so you know yeah. 350 400 400 bucks per episode that already pays your uh, your cost plus gives you some extra so uh, for for now the other podcast is totally stopped, so I will focus on that one because I really like now. You know, I live abroad. I have a girlfriend which is uh, not French, so I don't speak French uh, mostly, and my clients are not uh, in France mostly. So the podcast is like just it was serving myself a lot, but I felt like at one point I. I I listened to many French person and I felt like since I, I am, I'm like uh, in the English community a lot, I have like different uh, limitative beliefs now. And most of the right. French one, I feel like I don't have them anymore. So I, I doesn't, doesn't resonate much with the entrepreneur I met. Mm -hmm. And right. so that's why I decided to go by to to go to who I am now. It's like a, 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 a civil <laughs> citizen of the world, you know, like a living in the world and having different beliefs. So that's why I'm doing like uh, this switch in English. Yeah. Yeah. Totally understand that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so maybe after your episode, we're going to have a lot of, uh, because you're famous on Twitter, we're going to have a lot of listeners and I will be able to launch directly the, the yeah, 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 for sure. Get ready, get ready, get ready because my 200 people will come here and they'll be like, they'll blow this up. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, that was uh, cool, man. That was cool. I think we can. Yeah, end the, thank you so much. The podcast on this, uh, we 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 talk a bit about our subject, and it was really cool, and about you also. I have learned a lot of things about you. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Yeah. It was a pleasure to meet you and. Uh, one thing that I'll do once we stop this conversation is I'll go to my mirror and I'll have a conversation with myself and see how this works. Ooh, I'll actually do uh, this. I'm excited. Do it, do it and see. share it with me or even Twitter if you want. If you are crazy. Yeah, yeah. If I are crazy. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see. Uh, if I don't break the mirror. <laughs> in anger. Uh, no, you will not for but, sure. You will not. Mm -hmm. But maybe it will be like a Naya. You will answer something you didn't expect. Yeah, yeah, I'll 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 share with you or 
or with Twitter, I don't yeah. know. But uh, even on your podcast, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, or even my podcast. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. So thanks a lot for being here with me, being the first one. Um, yeah. Not an easy job to start uh, for <laughs> both way, but I uh, really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, same. Yeah. So for the for the listeners, uh, that's the beginning. So you can uh, send me some nice message if you want to tell me to continue because it's still starting and it's, it's still hard. You can also send message to Thiago if you like the episode with him he will definitely enjoy that and yeah. I tell, I say like uh, see you next week for the next episode we will be probably in solo this time and I will do one in solo one with a guest probably every, every perfect, week if perfect I, format if I am consistent yeah <laughs> <laughs> bye 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 bye